All right, uh, now we are going to talk about second partial derivatives. So um, if we have a function of two variables, then we can you know, find the first partial derivatives and then these first partial derivatives are again going to be a functions of x and y, and then we can differentiate them again. So constructing second partial derivatives. Right? So for example, um, I don't know, uh, let, let me give you some simple example. So if um, f, um, let's say, of x, y is, I don't know, e to the minus x, y squared, then in order to compute the second partial derivative with respect to, we can differentiate it with respect to x first, followed by the derivative with respect to y, right? So, um, let me differentiate it with respect to x first. Differentiating it with respect to x, so y squared is, is a constant with respect to x, so I'm going to just differentiate e to the minus x, so it is minus e to the minus x times y squared, right? So now what is the partial derivative f x y? It means that first I begin with the partial derivative with respect to x that I have just computed, and then I'm going to differentiate it with respect to y. Right, so it is minus e to the minus x times the partial derivative with respect to y is 2y. Um, all right, so notice that it is important uh, in which order we differentiate, right? So the notation f, x, y means that we first differentiate with respect to x and then with respect to y, while f, y, x is going to, to do the the opposite thing. Okay, so um, the thing about it is that uh, for a two variable function, there are four second order partial derivatives, right? So because we can differentiate with respect to xx, then xy, then yx, and then yy. Um, if we have a function of two variables, then it is convenient to organize all the second partial order, uh, second order partial derivatives into a matrix. So, and this is called the Hessian matrix. In the same way, for a three variable function, there's going to be nine second order partial derivatives because we have three variables, and then the kind of the first partial derivatives can be any one of the three. And the second partial differentiation, again, can be any one of the three. So in total, we have three times three, uh, which is nine um, partial derivatives. So if we have a function of n variables, then, of course, that there's going to be n square uh, second order partial derivatives that we can organize into the Hessian matrix of uh, size of dimensions n by n. Okay. Um, so here is some, well, an example. So uh, how can we find uh, second partial derivatives and the Hessian matrix of the, this function? So in order to find the second order partial derivatives, we've got to begin with first order partial derivatives, of course, right? So f, let me do fx and fy first. So the partial derivative with respect to x is going to be um, x cube. So its derivative is, sorry, 6 um, is 3 x square plus x square y cube so y cube is a constant so i'm just differentiating x square is 2x times y cube minus 2y square there is no x here so its partial derivative with respect to x is, is zero so f y now x cube there is no y here so its partial derivative is zero plus x square y cube x square is a constant so i'm going to just keep it x square and the partial derivative of y cube is 3y squared. So I'm going to write 3y squared here and minus uh, 4y. Okay, so these are first order partial derivatives. So now let me do the second order partial derivatives. Let, let me change the, the color. Um, so f x x to find f f x x, I'm going to take this and differentiate it with respect to x again. So the derivative of 3x squared with respect to x is 6x plus the derivative of 2x 
uh, y cube. So two y cube is a constant. The derivative of x is, is just one. So it's two y cube. Now f x y. So I am still differentiating f x, but now with respect to y. So now I'm going to differentiate uh, f x with respect to y. Right. So three x squared. The derivative with respect to y is zero. Uh, 2xy cubed, so 2x is a constant, and the derivative of y cubed is, so let me just write 2x, the derivative of y cubed is uh, 3y squared, so this is 6xy squared. Okay, so let me change, change the color. So now I'm working with Fy. So now I'm going to, to find the other two partial derivatives and now I'm differentiating Fy. So Fyx, I'm going to uh, take the expression for Fy and differentiate it with respect to x. All right, so 3x squared y cubed, uh, differentiating with respect to x. Um, 3y squared is a constant. So let me just try to 3y squared. Uh, times the derivative of x squared is 2x, and this is 6xy squared. Now, fyy, to find fyy, I'm going to differentiate this expression with respect to y. So, 3xy squared, so let me just uh, do it faster, it's going to be 6x squared y minus 4. Okay, so... Notice, um, well, let, let me just just uh, just just do do the matrix now. So the Hessian matrix is basically just uh, we just copy all this this information into a matrix. So f x x is six x plus two y cube. F x y is six uh, x y square. F y x is again six x y square, and f y y is six x square y minus four. So notice something important that uh, f x x f x y equals f y x. Okay, this is uh, no coincidence, um, and th th this is in fact a theorem. So um, what it says is that in general f x y may not be equal to f y x, but under nice conditions they are the same. So let me just explain to you. So what ni nice conditions are? So these nice conditions essentially means um, always in practice. Always in practice. So when you do your calculations, you don't really have to to bother much about it. So it's going to be like all the time. So in general, it is true that um, f x y may not be equal to f y x, but this happens. In order for this to happen, you kind of need to um, carefully construct an example. So you need to construct an example specifically for the purpose of um, having different mixed partial derivatives. And believe me, it's not easy to do it. So let me explain why. So why it's not easy to construct this example, because we have this um, mixed derivative theorem or Clares theorem and which says that if a function of two variables um, has continuous partial derivatives of first and second order then the mixed partial derivatives in different order are going to be different are, are going to be the same right so the key um, key requirement here is that all partial derivatives should be continuous but now think about it. Um, so most of the time in practice, you work with functions defined by explicit equations, by formula, right? So like, I don't know, if you just come up with any any equation like e to the x, y times ln, I don't know, z plus x divided by one plus x squared. I mean, any specific single equation is always going to be, um, continuous on its domain but then if you differentiate this with respect to any variable like i don't know with respect to x then you will still get an explicit equation a single equation and if you differentiate it for the second time you will again get 
an explicit equation, a single equation for defining your function, right? And all these equations, all the, these functions defined by a single equation are going to be um, continuous on, on their domains. So which essentially means that um, for anything that you usually work with, this theorem is going to, to be applicable, right? So how is it possible that the, the theorem is not applicable? So in order for, um, you know, for this to happen, for mixed partial derivatives to be different, you need to construct an example that is a piecewise defined function. So you, you will need to, to come up with an equation that says that f of x, y should be one formula if x, y is something and some other formula if x, y is, is something different. So this is possible, but it's not an easy job, believe me. So I, I know such an example. So if you're interested, you can just Google Claire's theorem and, and find out, uh, you know, how to construct an example on which Claire's theorem that does not apply, but it, it's not easy. So most of the time in practice, we don't really uh, care much about it. And partial derivatives are going to be, um, mixed partial derivatives are going to be equal. So here is an example. Um, so how do we find this? So first, um, uh, let me do this d2f, dz, dy. So this is essentially, so is differentiation of f with respect to first y and then z. Right, so in order to differentiate with respect to y and then with respect to z, we first should begin with to differentiate with respect to y, right? So fy is, um, what is it, is, let us look at the uh, formula for the, for the f, right? So ln z is um, a constant, so we've got to just differentiate e to the xy. Um, the derivative of the exponential function is the exponential function itself is e to the x y times the derivative of whatever is in the exponent and it is x y so I'm going to differentiate it with respect to y so and x is a constant so its derivative is just x and times ln z because ln z is treated as a constant okay um so this is f y now f y z now i need to differentiate this expression with respect to z okay so what is it um x times e to the x y is just a constant so x times e to the x y is just a constant and uh the derivative of ln is one over z okay that, that's it okay so now come how can we find f um, z x y so according to Claire's theorem in order to differentiate with respect to z x and y we can switch the order of differentiation we can first differentiate with respect to y z and then with respect to whatever remains x right um, so why is this so because um, well according to Claire's theorem we can switch the order of two derivatives two partial derivatives Right, um, so like um, f z z x y, so we can first switch. How can we get y z x by by switching? Uh, so we can first switch, say um, x and y, so we'll get z y x, and then we can switch z and y. So f y z x. Okay, so this is why. Uh, but essentially, we can always you know uh, if if you have any order in differentiation, you can you know make any some number of switches to just rearrange the the order into any anything that any other order that that, that you want. So which is why this is true. Okay, so essentially it means that uh, we we should we we can take whatever we computed here and now differentiate it with respect to x. Because this is f, y, z, so we just need to differentiate it with respect to x. Okay, so with respect to x, 1 over z is a constant. Uh, and now I've got to differentiate uh, the, this product. 
and the, this is the product so i've got to do it by the product rule so i'm first i'm going to differentiate x times e to the xy plus x times the derivative of e to the xy and the derivative of e to the xy is y e to the x y okay and this whole thing i guess i can rewrite it by taking out e to the xy so e to the xy divided by z times 1 plus xy so small simplification okay so that's the result um basically there is a little exercise here in in the lectures that essentially i just did i mean i did do this calculation in a different order uh than the, the this printed printed text but i do encourage you to pretend that you haven't seen it so to just i don't know without looking at the slide to calculate um, the partial derivative um, f z x y um, with respect to the, the the given order so first by z then by x then by y so to ju just just to see that yeah you know you you get the same thing okay so that's it about second partial derivatives